Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about filling in some gaps. So let's get into it. So the question in question was posted on an old video I made which is called Why do self-taught programmers do better than educated ones? And the question was, could you do a video going into more detail of what specific pieces of theory or knowledge you're looking for or commonly see missing that self-taught programmers should make sure to flesh out or f uh, in order to fill the gaps that you have mentioned so they can make sure that they are well-rounded uh, are we talking object-oriented concepts, study networking, database theory, architecture design philosophies and so forth well uh, so there was another comment here that I really liked uh, which said that this is still just boot camp mentality. It's not about filling in gaps. It's about cultivating a holistic understanding of the field and the syllabus of any well-respected computer science degree is the place to start. It will take years but f the good news is that you don't need to know all of it in order to enter the industry. Uh, I completely agree with that. Uh, so one of the things that I've been saying to software developers who are trying to get into the field and it's the biggest piece of advice I can give you when you start out is to not try necessarily to learn all the things because the reality is that you don't know enough about what's relevant in order to make good bets. You're just going to spend your time. I mean, you can go in and do that. It's just, as I've said before, guys, the main thing is that you're good at something, that you learn a stack or a set of stacks depending on how passionate and how much time you have. Uh, because nobody's going to want to hire someone who claims to know every single tool under the sun and then I talk to you for five minutes and I realize that actually you don't know any of this sort of stuff, right? So if we're going to be a little bit more concrete about this, the, the fundamental problem for me uh, to describe this to you is that what you need to do in order to fill in those gaps very much comes down to what sort of challenges you're going to face within the industry. Now I have worked for long enough now that there are only a handful of issues that are left that I would say are things that I don't really know how to solve and that's not because I necessarily am the best at everything guys I'm not it's just that I've been working for long enough and been faced with enough concepts that I actually know uh, I, I, I know where my weeks most of my weak spots are and I know what I can do and I know what's going to be very difficult for me to achieve and you talk about studying networking yeah I have studied networking but if you ask me can you from the t at the top of your my head uh, explain how to what bits to flip in a cider uh, block in order to get like you know say just a few uh, subnets or uh, can you explain the OSI model and I kind of have to remember like what layers are there and so forth and so forth. Database theory like uh, what's the uh, I mean I've read books on database theory that doesn't necessarily mean that I know everything about it. Architecture design and philosophies there's tons of this stuff right. So the problem is that yes all of these things are relevant to you just as the object oriented com the programming is important to you but the thing that really matters is that you understand that these are theoretical uh, concepts but you need to be able to apply them in reality to solve concrete problems this is where it gets tricky and you don't get that by just reading you need to have experiences that are very difficult to achieve with just the reading itself let me give you a very very concrete example so this is my favorite one in front end where uh, we can talk about back end as well but uh, one of the number one things that I always ask for when I've talked to a front-end developer is can you explain to me what a bundler is? Like a webpack or rollup or parcel or whatever you're using, right? Do you know that the vast majority, and this is the people who call themselves seniors as well, they call themselves senior software developers and I ask them and they don't know. They have no idea what it does, they don't really know how it works and I go, okay, uh, how are you going to help the junior debug the build process if you don't know that? they don't know. The reality is that they don't know. So to give you a, a concrete example, when I have had to figure something like that out, where literally this is what I've said a hundred times before guys, when you deal with an area, if you're a back-end dev or a front-end dev, 
you don't really know in the start of things how much you have to learn to be really good at that because there's an entire ecosystem of things around the coding itself supporting tools build tools pipelines uh, and networking uh, authentication validation of uh, authorization and validation and all this sort of stuff that you need to understand and you have no way of learning that as a self-taught developer or even as a like a university student before you get into the industry so what I have done, for example, is to start by learning something really, really well and then gone into to the industry, practice and practice and been exposed to tons and tons of problems. I know how to deal with a lot of problems. One thing that I realized the other day was that I need to brush up on my um, Memo on my profiling skills because it's been so long that I had to debug a latency issue. So I'll give you a, a good example where so and this is me now supposed to in this context I'm supposed to be the front-end developer uh, and so the front-end application that we were running was running a backend for front-end application using NestJS with the uh, Apollo server serving up a GraphQL interface towards our front-end application now that was running in a Kubernetes pod um, on a Azure uh, on Azure cloud and the problem we had was that in the production environment uh, we had a latency issue. Now after just a few requests the latency popped up to about 130 seconds. That's an enormous amount of time to see from any server, like it was completely unusable. And the traffic or the throughput was just roughly 20 requests. That was it. That was all it was required, a second or something. I Not even a second, I think it was like per minute or something like that. So it was silly, right? And the problem with this is that latency, if you didn't know that, is like one of the most difficult issues that you can debug in a software application because there's so much between your client, your browser, and the actual problem. Like there's so many areas that there where it can be sort of something that goes wrong. So I had to I had to have knowledge of Kubernetes, I had to have knowledge of networking, operating systems, C groups, uh, Azure Cloud. Uh, I also needed to, because in this specific company they were using the Elastic Stack, so I had to figure out how to actually get uh, APM metrics and so forth, so I could actually see what the pod problems were, because first question you should always ask yourself when you have a latency issue is, do you have enough CPU, do you have enough uh, memory, uh, is the... Um, is the pod healthy? Uh, is there like an unreasonable amount of tracking? Like how full is the system? Is it like working really hard for some reason? And then when you can sort of dismiss that, you can look at how long does the DNS lookup take? Is there some issue with that? Because that's a classic one where it's uh, slow or so forth. You can't really find the IP address that you're looking for. Uh, and then you can of course ask the question, is there some problem with Because this was a node server and so node is single, uh, it runs by default, I think it still does on one core, which means that you need to look at, okay, is this a problem with that we're simply seeing too much load? In this case, it was probably not the case, the case because we had so little traffic and so high latency, but then you bump up the memory because Node doesn't, by default, use all of the memory available to it. It's, I think it's capped at about two or three thousand, uh, two, three gigabytes or something like that for, of RAM. And so you start going, and then you look at the capacity of the application in the pods, like do you have enough resources to, um, uh, to actually run this on, like the on the worker nodes that you that you're running, is there some problem with the VM, like the actual uh, node that you're dealing with uh, in Kubernetes, uh, versus just having an issue with the pod communication or something like that? And then you go down to the uh, application layer and you start thinking, okay, we're using NestJS, and well, let's have a look. And then you pull out your profiler and you go through. All right, let's run the process. In this case, it was super difficult because I didn't have DevOps, I, I didn't have access to my own pods so I had to try to figure it out reproduce the issue locally which was a nightmare because you don't want to do performance testing locally if you have a problem in the environment because if it's in the environment you don't get accurate reprodu reproduce the results because you lap your workstation is going to be a lot stronger usually and when I finally realized, I went through the profile layer, I looked at the memory, the CPU usage, everything looked normal. There was like a small memory leak, which is like daily bread for anybody who's working with JavaScript. No problems whatsoever. And then finally, one of my coworkers said, hey, Frederick, 
could it be that there is uh, some problem with the load? And I go, yeah, but we, it's so low and it's only in the production environment. So my thinking is that there is an environmental issue. Okay, yeah, sure. sure. But go and run a load test against the test environment to see, because we have some users, even though it's very low traffic, maybe that will reproduce it. So we run a load test. I've pulled down Auto Cannon, one of my favorite load, to load tester, and I run it. And sure enough, there is a load issue. Basically, that means that our application is unperformant, even though everything we're doing is literally just a network request. There's no heavy computation or anything like that. And so that means that now I have to go through, okay, the bundler and like the output of the code, is that an issue? Is the production build diff different from the development devel build? I could exclude that because I understand how the differences work. And then finally, I realized that actually we're on node 14 and nest seven point something something and I think the latest one at the time was 11 or something like that. So we bump that, I exclude all of the, like in this case it was GraphQL because I could, if I remove the GraphQL layer, I realized that just a regular REST call which is fast, should be by default faster because there's no valid runtime validation going on, on there. Uh, We'll check, we check the like the rest call, and that was fine. But when we had the server side, uh, like the Apollo server, who was doing the validation on top, that caused an issue. So if we then we start started narrowing on the problem, and then finally, after tons and tons and tons of time, I realized that all right, if I just update Nest and the Apollo server to the latest version, and like do a node update, it seems to work. Now, imagine me trying to figure out if you know all of those things in an interview. And now, like the list I just gave you, uh, to do the thing that I'm talking about right now, guys, like, it will take you years of practice to know all the concepts that I just talked about. There is no way that you as a new rookie junior software developer is going to have all that knowledge or be able to study all the things that you need to do in order to figure that out. Some of that stuff that I talked about, some of this I've learned from studying, of course, but a lot of it I also learned from just working with those tools. And that comes from years and years of working with different tools, different stacks, facing different types of problems and so forth. The thing that you should be focusing on is, as this, as this subscriber was saying, or like the person who points to the comment, it's a holistic understanding of the entire ecosystem of delivering software. So when you are a front-end developer, for example, don't just look at, oh, I just need to learn, say, React or so forth. Well, same thing with back-end developers. Don't look at just, oh, I need to know how to start an, uh, an application. You need to understand how all the tools that you are using in order to deliver work. If you do that, if you have a holistic understanding of your entire ecosystem, that's when you start going into what I'm talking about. That's where the bridge, the gaps usually are. And self-taught developers, they, as I've said, they're usually lacking a lot in the more like theoretical concepts, as I was saying in my little description there. How do you actually like? What is the difference? Uh, the difference between like how, how does a computer get uh, get affected with the high load? versus you know resource management things like that and the theoretical uh, or like the people who go to university they're usually as I said in that video they're usually light on uh, not hands-on tool knowledge and so forth uh, in the start of things but guys the thing that I just talked about the seniors didn't know how to do this because we're all different, like we have different experiences. And the reason why I could work on this is because I've been working in many, many different areas. I've been doing back end, front end. Uh, I'm not uh, an expert, uh, like, but enough DevOps to know uh, to, to know my way around the, uh, like the infrastructure and so forth and so forth. And there were tons of other things that I could have probably checked that I didn't even think of. So to me, for me to make a video for you where I go through all of those things, well, that's basically impossible. I can basically, in essence, not give you that. But what I can give you is this simple suggestion. And that is to understand that the first thing you should prioritize is to learn a stack so you can produce an application. And then you have to look at the tools that you are using and understand how you can do these things in different ways. An example for the front-end developers. If I ask you 
how do you debug your node server how do you fix your webpack configuration or things like that and you tell me you don't know that tells me that you haven't been working for all that long and this is a risk for you because as I said to I was telling my coworker about this the backend guys are not going to come and help you if you have a problem with your backend for front end server because in your company you're a front end developer and in this specific company you need to know how to use a node application to basically deal with nest and so forth i'm not an expert in nest i figured it out literally figured it out as i was going along because i have enough knowledge to do that and it's my job to fix it that is the thing that I'm talking about. You have to learn enough about the ecosystems that you find yourself in to actually be able to literally just get a, a, a problem in your lap and then figure it out as you go along. So what I want you to take away from this is that I can absolutely make you tons of videos of um, with content about how how do I check for like what should you be learning what should, what things what gaps do people usually have as I said most people don't know how to do anything besides the actual coding but I've told people this a hundred times before guys it's not just about coding when you're a software developer it is about debugging issues it's about understanding an entire ecosystem of services and effectively using those if you want to go really advanced and you want to talk about leadership and things like that there are things such as you know how do you set up a good team environment what type of values should, should you input in the team, what type of team rituals do you need, um, what type of work environment do you should you set up, should you let them do whatever they want or should you try to control them, etc, etc. There's tons and tons and tons of these sorts of things, right? And that's why I make these videos because I cannot answer all of those questions in one sitting. It's impossible. But what I can tell you is that usually the thing that you should be focusing on is to learn one stack really, really well so that you can produce results and then understand where you are, what parts of the delivery process you aren't so stable in. Because as in my little story here, guys, I literally, to solve that latency problem, had to have, I, I needed to know everything, everything that is relevant, at the very least, to a person who works in both DevOps front end and back end to debug that issue because the whole stack was involved when we're dealing with the uh, potentially the whole stack can be involved with a latency issue and that's just me that's just one case but there are tons of these examples so that's the thing that you should be looking at start with this small thing learn how to code learn how to make an application and then expand and learn how the tools that you use in order to ship software how do they work and then expand expand add layers to that onion as I like to say that is the best strategy that you can use and that doesn't matter if it, it doesn't matter if you're self-taught or if you're an academic academic or you went to a university I can promise you it's the same deal if you want to get to these levels of understanding it's literally continuous learning and expanding how much of the stack that you actually understand it's goes that it's the same for self-taught as it is for people who uh, like do uh, university courses that's at least what my experience is have a great day